Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to what is already our fifth edition of AI in Recruitment and Sourcing. My name is Adrian Kolf, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Matcher. And after a short break last week, when my dear colleague Andrew took over my responsibilities, whether you like it or not, I am back and I'll be your host today. Now, before I introduce our, our next and fifth speaker, um, let me tell you a little bit more what we do with Matcher and why we organize these webinars. Because our core business and focus is sourcing and recruitment because we are an embedded talent solution provider. And our sourcers and recruiters work directly for clients like TikTok, Booking.com, Stripe, Revolut, Miro, and work fully embedded into their team for a fixed fee per month. So, we need to be on the absolute top of our game. So a couple of years ago, we thought, well, why don't we organize the event that we want to attend ourselves so that we can learn from all these amazing speakers and share that knowledge with the rest of the world. So that's why we are here today. And that's why I'm very excited to announce our fifth speaker, which is Mark Hamel, a principal sourcer at Amazon. And if you remember correctly, during our third keynote with Jonathan Kidder, Jonathan mentioned Mark to be his mentor multiple times. So it looks like we've learned from the students and now it's time for the master to come in. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, hey, thanks for having me today. Yeah, amazing. So, so Mark, what do you think of that comment, right? So, so yeah. Jonathan called you his mentor. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not talking about that. I would say it's the other way around. Uh, I've learned so much from Jonathan, so I could say he's my mentor. Uh, but it's a two-way street. We both learned, must agree to disagree. That's the best, the best answer. I love it. I love it. Hey, Mark, I know you have a lot of like very exciting uh, things uh, things to share with us. Before I give you uh, before I give you the floor, um, for our audience today, TRC, our tech recruitment conference that we organize next week um, in MSM is completely sold out. Very proud with that. I'm also not totally surprised because we have some amazing keynote speakers, but we still have a few virtual tickets left. So um, if you want to join the live stream and receive the recordings after, subscribe to our newsletter to get a 20% discount on your tickets. Um, and I, I truly hope uh, to, uh, to see you there next, uh, next week. So, Mark, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. Oh, right. Well, thank you again for, for having me. Um, we're going to have some fun. We're going to talk about LLMs, large language models, um, and, and what that really means in terms of like how we use them with like, there's the chat GPT is the most famous one, of course. And there's all these open source models. And we'll talk about kind of three things. One, what they are, why we should even think about them and why we should think about them as sourcing, uh, really why it even matters. Then we'll talk about running some locally on your own computer and why that's beneficial. And then third, we'll talk about things that we can do with language models on our own if we do run them open source or locally, uh, and kind of why that's cool with a thing called LangChain. So it'll get a little technical towards the end. So if anybody has questions, 
please, please, please reach out to me. Like the conversation doesn't stop at the end of my blabbering. Uh, reach out, ping me, Skyrite, use one of these cool tools, find me on any one of the places I sit. I, you're all sorcerers, as Dean uh, DaCosta says, you can find me. Um, but there's my, my address, uh, my email address on this slide. Um, so two things. One, there's that soapbox I wanted to mention. But second, anybody who's listened to me speak uh, knows that I'm a big Star Wars fan and I use this image uh, of Luke Skywalker. Uh, that's my face on Luke Skywalker's body. So I'm a, uh, with the name Mark Hamill, which is the actor who played Luke Skywalker. Uh, that's why I did that. And backstory here, that's why I, I led with this. I took uh, Photoshop courses probably, uh, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago, I think it was, to learn how to do exactly that. And because we're talking about generative AI, large language modules, uh, pretty much the future of AI, this is what I did in mid journey in about five seconds. And that's a way better picture, right? Like that's my face on a Jedi with some sweet hair. Uh, my wife would never let me do that with my hair. But the point of this is all these cool skills that we used to learn uh, and you have other tools to learn how to do them, it's advancing. And the barrier to entry is much lower. Like I have zero artistic ability uh, and I was able to plug this into mid journey in a matter of minutes and uh, seconds, I guess, and come up with that as a result. So pretty cool. Um, and then the final thing before we uh, kick off, this logo that says, may the source be with you. Uh, I built this with Dolly on um, ChatGPT, and it was, you know, it could take several iterations because I, the text didn't come out the best. Uh, sometimes it would skip letters and stuff like that. This is the best one I could get that says, may the source be with you. Uh, but I just want to say like, this is all with generative AI. Uh, so continuing that theme, uh, what we're going to talk about is LLMs, which LLMs, large language models, is in everybody's discussion right now. So like you could feel like my heart can barely take no more about talking about these large language models, but we'll make it fun. Uh, but before I, I go any further, I did want to mention this is going to be somewhat of a PowerPoint presentation for two reasons. Typically, I would go and do a lot of live, um, like show what the tool is and do it live. I'll do a, a slight uh, uh, notion of that, but most of it will be like screenshots and things of that nature because some of the stuff I can't do on specific laptops. So I did it on my personal and then presenting on this other one because it's much faster. So bear with me through the screenshots. It's not going to be as live as a typical session, but the points will, will still be there. So all the PSAs aside, this is maybe tough for people to see, uh, but you'll get the slides after the session. This is an evolution tree of all the LLMs, not all, let it take back, not all, not even close to all, but an evolution tree of LLMs. So you can see up here the big ones, actually you probably can't see, like GPT-4, BARD, LAMA, Claude. This is kind of the newer stuff and where we're at now. But over the years, there's been a lot of other attempts for language models. And that's what we're going to talk about today is like, why would anybody want to use one of these as opposed to like the big, most common chat GPT or GPT-4 or Claude or what have you? What do these other ones bring to the table and why would we want to use something like that? And how does that apply to sourcing? This is another visual to kind of picture. This was back in March is when I could find the newest version of it that shows a bunch of uh, the different buckets of these LLMs. Like you have Palm. This is all the, the Google work right here. They have Flan, Palm, which is all powering Bard. Um, Jurassic, you have, this is just a visual of kind of what this looks like and the parameters. So the B is the parameters, the size of the model. Um, pretty cool stuff. Like it just gives a little bit of a very uh, light view of, of what all these models look like and how many there are out there. But why are we talking about this? Um, well, let's talk about the differences between just like hopping on ChatGPT and why you want to use something open source. ChatGPT, it's and cost. Let's just pull some of these up here. So ChatGPT is cost. Subscription-based, if you want all the good tech, all, all the plugins, all that kind of good stuff. Or open source is generally free use. And the things that you would pay for would just be the, the hardware that you rent or whatever you want to do with deploying it on your own computer. But if you can't do that and you want to use it on some sort of cloud-based service, you have to pay for the hardware from the cloud-based service. Then customization. Um, with open source, you can customize anything all the way down to the code level, which is why these things can advance so quickly. ChatGPT, you can't really customize that. The quality and performance, historically, um, ChatGPT was so much further ahead, or GPT was so much further ahead than open source technology. But due to the ability for individuals to jump in and train their own models and advanced models, it's moving quickly to, to, to get up to that same uh, point. So ChatGPT, again, it's, it's great, but the gap is closing. This is the biggest key for why you'd want to use open source or even use something locally on your own computer is the privacy piece. So I'll put these both up there. ChatGPT, they process the data externally out somewhere. Nobody really knows where. They haven't really disclosed much of that. So what are they doing with the data? Interesting. Open source, you can deploy them locally. 
So that eliminates all that external noise. Like it's only going to be one way traffic. So all the stuff that you're doing stays locally on your computer. You're not sharing data with anything externally. So that's a big key, especially if you try to use some of these when you work for a large company, uh, like a small bookstore company uh, like mine. Uh, and then the ecosystem as well, like open source is driven through like these thriving communities and it really helps to innovate and it really helps to just close that gap between what ChatGPT and GPT has done, um, which like I just said, it's limited. And the last one's also key, the availability of models. So ChatGPT is just one model kind of, um, but then open source there's, and like I showed you that first graphic of, of the LLM tree, um, there's a lot out there. So it comes back to like a whole robust group of, of models that you can leverage. And why is this important at all? Well, does anybody, oops, oh, I know I did that. Let's uh, just use the space bar. Um, who's this individual? Uh, this is Glenn Cathy, for those of you that don't know. He is the black belt Boolean or Boolean black belt, if you want to call it that. Um, the source is, uh, is definitely with him. Uh, but why am I showing you a graphic of him right here? Well, uh, Glenn Cathy talks about something commonly in a lot of his sessions, especially like I was at Talent 42, I spoke up there and he spoke again about this session or his session was, was again about a topic that he typically brings up and that's about search engine relevance. What is search engine relevance? Essentially, he, he makes the argument that these sources like Google search or uh, DuckDuckGo or Bing search um, all return different results and they can do so with the same exact string. So why is that important to think about? Well, who's to say these, these uh, searching uh, platforms, which ones to say the relevant uh, is providing the most relevant results? Is Google's results the most relevant? Is, is Bing's? Is DuckDuckGo? Is one of these other ones? Not really sure. Uh, typically, you'd think the most relevant is the one that gives you the most accurate answer or the most, uh, yeah, I guess we could say accurate answer. But again, what's going to be the most accurate answer? It really depends on what it's returning. So all of that aside, he argues that that, that is actually a good thing because it allows for us to use different sources to, to get a well uh, uh, rounded view of different candidates. So maybe we use a string on Google, tap those results out, shift over to Bing, get new results. Like that's a good thing. And so that comes back to LLMs. Maybe we want to explore using multiple LLMs to try to get to the same source. Like if you exhaust all your resources and use ChatGPT for everything, you're only going to get the same set of results that others are getting essentially. So let's lose some of these other LLMs. So I wanted to bring that up. Let me get, there we go. I wanted to get this full screen again. Um, so first and foremost, let's talk about some of these that are cloud-based or that you can jump on and use that are outside of ChatGPT, but do a lot of these really cool things. The first one's called Poe. Uh, Poe is something that is got a cool logo. Uh, it's made by Quora. Uh, for those of you who've heard Quora, it's like a similar to Reddit. It's like a big, uh, it's a forum, uh, pretty much a discussion forum. Uh, but their goal is really to just build a better ChatGPT app. Uh, and their other goal is they want to build the universal AI messaging client. Uh, but why it's cool, I'm going to shift back and forth between screens here a little bit. But why Poe is pretty cool is because here's what Poe looks like. This is a um, really just a place with all these chatbots. So if you go to like the official bots, which is the tab I'm on right now, you can see you can use GPT-4, Stable Diffusion, which is text to image. You can use Claude. You can use GPT-3.5. You can use Llama, which is the uh, Meta's version of, of uh, a large language model. You can also use things like Solar and, and Mistral, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And it gives you access to a bunch of other LLMs all in one source. So you don't have to go to you know, Claude's website. You don't have to go and download uh, um, Llama and try to deploy it locally. You can hop onto Poe, select one of these and use it. So it's very cool in that it allows you to access quickly some of these other LLMs, which again will give you different results than other ones were. So Poe is a very cool resource for it. You can also pay uh, for Poe, which gives you access to like a higher uh, limit of use with GPT-4 and other sources. Um, the next one is, I'm going to just go do it this way, a little bit unstructured, is Hugging Chat. So Hugging Chat is is uh, from Hugging Face, which is a the place where everybody's going to want to go to for models. And, and get, I think they have like 300,000 plus models right now on there. But they have the ability to deploy some of those. So if you go to Hugging Chat, you can select your model right here, which they have access to Llama. They have Llama code. They have Falcon, they have Mistral, a few others, and you can also do web searching enabled. So that's a pretty cool tactic because a lot of other ones are just trained up to a certain date. Like, uh, I don't know exactly the current date, but I think it's like January now or something like that with GPT-4 uh, of 2022. Um, so anything prior to that, you couldn't ask them who won the Laker game last night, even though they didn't play last night. 
But with this, with Web Enabled, you could deploy one of these and ask those questions. So another great resource is the Hugging Chat. Firework AI, um, oh, I, let me, I had a cool graphic on this one, so I'm gonna play it because I think it's cool. Uh, firework AI, uh, maybe you're a firework. Katy Perry, you're welcome, everybody. Uh, firework AI is, it just provides access to state-of-the-art open source technology for, chat, uh, for AI chatbot use. But the cool thing is you can fine tune and deploy your own chatbots. So what does that mean? That means that if you go to the site and you click on there, you can just try it here this way. It's free, no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do it. Uh, we're just gonna go down and do it the basic way. So here's the list of all the LLMs that you can use. You can use Mistral, you can use Llama, you can use all these crazy other ones, all this down here. But then you can have add-ons. This is kind of where you fine tune. Let's say like here's language. Uh, I think there's like a Chinese one. Uh, let's say you're a sourcer and your team says all of a sudden they want to start hiring in somewhere in China. Well, you're gonna get, uh, if you notice you speak the language, you're gonna have to do a lot of translating. Whereas you can fine tune one of your models by clicking this and then it'll deploy the Chinese language in there. And you can ask it, hey, uh, here's a resume in Chinese. Can you equate this to English so I can understand it? So it's pretty cool. And this all gives you that kind of same interface. Um, I'll just click on one you can see. I'll click on one so you can see, potentially. Gotta love doing this stuff live. Oh, wow, come on. I have gig internet and I have like the Wi-Fi 7 now, and this is what it's doing to me. Anyway. I'm going to skip this in the interest of time. It oh, here we go. Your prompt. You can type in your prompt here, like tell the crowd watching this session a joke. And you can generate. And what do we got? Why did the computer go to the party? Because it wanted to have a bite of fun. That's a that's a terrible joke. Uh, we will definitely need to try another LLM for the joke in a minute. Uh, but that's what it looks like. It also spits it out in, in JavaScript, Python, curl, if you want to deploy it that way. But pretty cool. Firework AI. You can do a little fine-tuned training. Next one is one of my favorites. It's the, the LM Sys. Uh, they do, they're famous for their chatbot arena, as they call it. Um, I'll show you what that is in a second. But it's built um, by a group from, there's a couple different universities that are involved in this. And it was... Uh, UC Berkeley, UCSD, and Carnegie Mellon all built Alexis, which is their chatbot arena. So why is this cool? Well, it does several things. These different tabs appear at the top allow you to do all the fun stuff. The first is it's blind on the first one. So you can just type in a question. So let's do tell a joke to the crowd watching this. And it's going to give us an error. Fantastic. Nothing like doing these live. Cool. So typically what it would do is it would write out to each one of these is a hidden, we don't know which LLM it is, would give you an answer. And then at the bottom, you can, usually it pops up down here with two little thumbs up or a thumbs down, one up, one thumbs up, one thumbs down. You click which one you think was a better answer and it will put that into its voting, which the voting is all on the leaderboard. So this kind of gives you an idea of which uh, are some of the top performing LLMs. So that's cool. That's one thing that's fun. You can also do them side by side and select which one you want and then pick which answer is better. So fingers crossed this one works. Tell a joke to the crowd watching this. Please don't. Fantastic. Typically, it would pop up and give two answers and you could see which one is better. Or you could use one of the other language models and just compare them that way. Or the good old fashioned way, you can just do a single model and you can use really any one of these you would like uh, and use all the normal things you do with an LLM, you can use it in here. So it provides access to a whole wealth of open source LLMs, really cool technology. Um, so we'll pause there. So these are all, I'm gonna go back to the slideshow. So these are all of the, um, come on, the ones that are hosted externally. Like they have all these sources where they host all these LLMs. It's kind of cool that you can access these and do things differently just using ChatGPT or Claude, which are the most common. Now, why would you want to run it locally? Running locally means running it on your own computer or similar. Uh, you do that because you don't want it watching what you're doing, kind of like Jim staring through the blinds. So uh, running locally is uh, a great way to do this. Now, you have to think about compute power. Um, I have an M2 MacBook, so I have a lot of compute power in comparison, so I can do some cool stuff with it. Uh, but if you don't, you're going to want to deploy it on a cloud or rent resources, which we'll get to in a minute. But the key topic to know is what's called hugging face, which I mentioned earlier, which is the go-to source for the place that hosts all these models. Um, so as you can see, it has like, I took this a couple weeks ago. Uh, this has almost 340, go back, 340,000 models. And models are the LLMs essentially, if you go to like the text generation ones. So I mentioned like Llama and 
all these other uh, LLMs out there, it's got a bunch of these that are fine tuned in different ways. So we need to know this because this is where we're going to get our models from that we download and use. And this is a session I'm not going to do live because I'm not going to do this on my computer that I'm on right now. I did this on my personal computer to take these screenshots. But there's three ways that are very easy to use to deploy a model locally, as opposed to not having to go and sign up for ChatGPT. The first is called Text Generation Web UI. That's literally what it's called. Uh, it's a radio uh, web UI. So uh, the links are all included on the last slide, by the way. What this is, is it's just, it allows models that are quantized. So quantized models, um, I hope I'm not losing anybody. If I am, ping me later and say you lost me, explain it to me again. Quantized models are, if you, the, so a large language model is huge. You can't download that and run that on your computer. So what people do is they quantize them, meaning they compress them to an extent. So if you think about like an old uh, Windows computer, when you started to run out of disk space, you could go in and compress it. It essentially made it run a lot slower, but you could get more disk space out of it. It's kind of doing that, but in reverse. So think about um, like a box of, uh, I'm making this up so this works. Think about a box of colored pencils. You have like 32 colored pencils, meaning you can have different shades of different colors. So you could go and like get the exact shade of brown you're looking for just because you have 32 options to choose from to be very precise. That means that in terms of LLMs, you can type in a question and you'll get a very precise answer because it has those marker parameters. If you quantize a model, you take 32 uh, colored pencils and instead you have eight. You could still get the color you want to. It would just be you know a little bit different of a shade. It wouldn't be the exact ideal shade. So the precision goes down a little bit, but you're still getting the larger answer. So for example, if I'm to say like tell a joke to the crowd, it would be able to tell probably the same joke it normally would. But if you gave it some real precise parameters, tell a joke that was created from 1954 to 1955 in the month of January, blah, blah, blah. It's the more precise you get, the less accurate it will get. So that might be a weird way to word it, but that's what happens when you shrink a model or quantize the model. Um, but that's how you're able to download them is because they're, they're shrunken down, but you can still use them to almost their full extent. So. It's a very wordy way of saying this is what it looks like when you use this one called text generation web UI. You just type in the model here. I just did one with uh, Alvaros. It was just an open source one I first grabbed. You type in the model and you download it and then you click load. And this is what it looks like. Tell a joke to the crowd. This is that same joke, by the way, that I said wasn't very good. I said, why did the computer go to the party? Uh, because it wanted a bite of socializing. Uh, I just, I don't quite understand that one. Anyway. This is all done on my local machine, so I'm not having anything external uh, that this is touching because that's a terrible joke. I wouldn't want it to anyway. Ah, the next is LM Studio. This is my favorite by far because it's an actual app that you download. Um, it's very cool. It's a logo. So instead of having to do something like the last one was a, a Gradio web UI, you go to uh, GitHub, you clone the repo, you open it up on Gradio, and then you can access it in your browser. This one's just an app that you download. So LM Studio allows for, it connects with Hugging Face. You can type in up here, it might be tough to see. Vacuna, that's, or Vacunia, that's a model built by the people that built LMSYS. Um, and it gives you all the different variations. It gives you the different uh, quantizations, like I mentioned. It gives you different models that you can download. You can click on them, and they can give you a little more description. Point is, you can download a model, the same exact one I just used. And it looks like this. You can choose up here the model that you've downloaded, and then you can choose different parameters. Like there's presets if you want it to be better at coding, or if you want it to be better at um, text generation or things of that nature. It can do that, uh, but you can choose that. This was a much better joke. Uh, I asked it to tell a joke, a dad joke, and said, "Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything." That's a better joke. I like that one. Um, there was one I was running the other day. I'm going to tell you this now because I didn't screenshot it and I should have. I asked it to tell a joke. And it said, um, why did the vegetable delivery truck, uh, what, or what did the vegetable delivery truck do when it uh, got a flat tire? It didn't stay on the road because it brought asparagus. Asparagus, I was like, that's a good one. Uh, I wish I would have screenshotted that. So those are, that's my favorite one. And you have endless access to any model that you want. And again, thinking about why we're talking about this, is Glenn Cathy mentioned search engine relevance. Well, LLM relevance, how relevant are the topics? We just got a way better joke from a different model asking it the same exact question. Um, another one is GPT for all. I'm gonna share this real quick, just in the interest of time. It's something, again, you can, you can download and access. Um, but the cool thing is you can upload documents to it. So maybe you wanna ask questions about a massive PDF, or maybe you're doing research on some new technology that your team's hiring for. 
and you download the paper and you have no idea what it's talking about, you can ask it questions about it. That's really cool. Uh, I think that's the way of the future is really interact with documents better. And this does it locally. Uh, and then also you can connect to the web with this. It's limited in the number of models. It doesn't have all the models that you have access to through LM Studio connecting with Hugging Face, um, but it does a pretty pretty good job with the models you can select through. Um, so that's GPT for all, uh, very cool product. The uh, two other things uh, when we talk about running these locally, um, I'm not gonna share. I'm gonna jump back to what we talked about at the beginning of running locally in that um, sometimes you might not have the compute power. So you'll need to run these in a cloud service of some format. One of the best ways to do that is through Google Cloud, Google Cloud, your uh, pretty much a Google Studio for everything. What is Google Collab? Google Collab is, that's a cool logo. It's like HelloFresh. So I use that analogy because for those of us that cook, we typically go to the grocery store, uh, or let me take a step back. We have to think of what we wanna make. Then we go to the grocery store. We have to buy all the ingredients. We have to make sure they're good. We have to get home. We have to prepare them. We have to wash them, prepare them, chop them, cook them, do whatever you gotta do. A lot of steps where HelloFresh really just gives you a box and says, put this in the oven. So it's pretty much just teeing you up for everything you're gonna need very quickly and gives you all the resources you need right away. So a collab is a notebook where really all you have to do is just push play and it will run the code for you. I'll show you an example of that in a second, but it's free, there's no install, it uses resources on the cloud and it's pretty much seamless with your own Google Drive. So anything you wanna do with it, it loads up to your Google Drive. And it's like I said, everything's pre-installed. So what does that look like? Like I said, you this is a play button, you just push the play button and it will run all the code for you. You don't have to sit there and write code. You don't have to error check code unless it comes up with them. You can kind of diagnose that as you need. But it's again, it's like HelloFresh. You just put it in the oven. You just push the play button and, and it downloads and runs the code for you. So this is cool because again, all the things I mentioned to you before about running them locally, you usually have to do something somewhat creative and, and run some code in your own terminal and deploy the model. Whereas Google Collab, you don't have to do that. So this is just a, a GitHub repo. All of the resources are at the end. Everybody will have access to those of a bunch of these models. And this button right here says open in collab. So this is the screenshot of what it looks like on GitHub. You just put open in collab and it will take you to a collab notebook where you just push the play button. And it looks kind of like this. And you would just push the play button on this. It would run all the code for you. And then at the bottom, it would have a link that you click that takes you to the, the page that it loads up for it, uh, the Gradio web UI. So you can run it on a cloud-based service. Pretty cool, right? So if you don't have the compute power to run these locally, you can do it in a cloud service. So cool stuff. Uh, there's more though, and I'm doing okay on time, I think. The fun, so it's fun to run these models and do really cool things. And just everybody talks about using ChatGPT and all this cool stuff and all the things you can do. That's fun, don't get me wrong. But it gets even more fun when you talk about building your own and it's not that challenging to do so in reality through a thing that's called, I gotta show that, but wait, there's more through a thing that's called LangChain. So LangChain is a framework essentially that allows developers to build applications based on large language models. Essentially, it's just connecting various sources to a large language model like the web or some other tool. And it's really designed to perform those complex tasks through what's called chains. I'll show you what that means in a second. Essentially, it's like having ChatGPT that's fully tailored to what it is you wanna do and it's made up of, like I said, chains, agents, blah, 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 blah. This visual uh, sounds good, right? But this visual is what helps me understand it. This is really kind of what it looks like a back of the napkin drawing. And you're able to provide, let me just kind of demystify this. So you're the user, and then you provide your prompts. So let's think about a typical scenario of ChatGPT. You would load up ChatGPT and you would say, hey, ChatGPT, uh, what's the typical weather in Austin, Texas in what month are we in? October. It would run it through the model and then it would give you the answer of like, oh, the typical weather range is hot as Africa. And then you could ask another question or what's the coolest month? And then it would go through the chain again and give you that answer. What you can do with lane chain is you can load up those prompts or what's called prompt chaining, where you could say, hey, what uh, chat GPT first prompt? What's the weather in Austin, Texas in October? And then you could say, what's the best time to visit Austin, Texas? That's not as hot as October. And then from there, the next chain could say, uh, who knows what, but the point is you can put chains together and it will automatically run those for you. Why is this cool? Because you can also connect it with tools. So ChatGPT is not connected to the web. So you could give it the, the prompt of what's the current weather in Austin, Texas. It would run it through the model, realize it doesn't have that. So it would run it through the web, get your answer, bring it back to you. You could run another chain of 
what's the weather going to be next month? They could do another search, blah, blah, blah. It does these in repetition. So you don't have to sit there and continue to write prompts on these. It does these prompts for you, which allows for something much easier. So let me show you one uh, that I built uh, very quickly here. This is, so it, you can use a thing called FlowWise, or you can also use what's called Lightning Flow, which makes it visual to build these cool things together. Um, so here I used OpenAI. I put in a prompt for my template of the chains. That prompt read essentially just, you're a professional psychologist and you're great at understanding sentiment that people put in tone through different uh, posts and things of that nature. Um, you need to analyze communication style, personal traits, blah, 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 blah. I gave it a prompt to pretty much make it a psychologist that reads posts. Um, and then embeddings. You have to use embeddings because embeddings are how uh, like large language models put words together and understand words. Let me put that a different way. A LLM is essentially just predicting the next word. So has anybody done a Google search and you start to type in, what's the weather in Austin, Texas in, it would in gray put October or the summer months or what have you. It just predicts what the most common next words are. That's really what an LLM is doing. But ChatGPT or these other large language models we're supposed to now use what's called transformer. Uh, yeah, for transformers. So GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. It means you can transformer architecture. Transformer architecture is really the ability to look at everything in a 360 view. So it's not just looking for the next word. Transformer architecture is analyzing every word before, every word that could come prior, thinking about those and providing the most accurate result, as well as looking back at past conversations if it has memory enabled. So that's why transformer architecture is cool. And that's kind of what embeddings do is they provide the proper structure for how it's going to look at all of that. I can explain that differently later if people have questions. It's kind of irrelevant right now. But you have to give it embeddings. It walks you through how to do this on Langflow. Then you enable the web, because of course I wanted to access the web. And then I have my chain of prompts. And this is all for Reddit. So what I did is I said, hey, uh, here's what your, your prompts are going to be. You're going to look at all the posts on the URL I provide from, from a certain user. You're going to analyze those. You are going to look at each one of their comments. You're going to analyze those. And then at the end, you're going to give me a summary that tells me what common themes they have, what things they're interested in, all these other different aspects. Just so I can get a well-rounded view of a person. And that's all you have to do. So right here is what the end result looks like after I put all these in. I'm just giving it the URL for Erin Matthew, who I think saw this. I think I saw her name. This is her Reddit. Uh, I ran it by her, and she said it was pretty accurate. But this is just the URL to her site. And this is the output that it gave me. You probably can't read this, but it tells about her communication style. It tells that she likes to watch The Office which I'm a big fan of and shows like dinosaurs, not the mama, um, all this cool stuff. Why in any way is this helpful in recruiting and sourcing? Well, when we reach out to somebody, aren't we gonna wanna know these types of things? Like this is the perfect way to craft a message. You could even take the, the, the LangChain example I gave you a step further and say, after you've given this output, write a you know one paragraph, that's probably way too long, message that displays uh, all of these key things that we've discovered uh, for me, just so you don't have to review this, you could have it do it for you. But it's pretty cool. Like this is instead of having to do this, let's take a step back and think about if we did this with a web enabled chat GPT, we would have to go A, summarize all the posts from this link, B, summarize all the comments that this user made, C, blah, 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 blah. You would have to do these and it wouldn't be able to do those in sequential. You would have to go back and do those one by one. Whereas with something like Lane Chain, you can prompt it with a chain and it will run those for you. Pretty cool. Anybody can do this. It sounds more complicated than it is. The links are on the last slide, as I mentioned, where you can go to Flowwise, where you can go to, or, or to Langflow, and you can hop on and do these. All you need is an OpenAI API key, and you're golden. It uh, sounds a little more confusing than it is, I promise you. Next, uh, we have two and a half, three-ish more fun things, if you will, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, the, the next is another way that you think about doing um, more with these MLMs. One thing uh, that's pretty cool is there's, like I said, Gradio, or there's also Streamlit. What those are, are those are tools that make any GitHub repository um, pretty much a web UI, meaning that somebody can write code, you run it through Gradio or Streamlit, and then it would put it in a web UI. That's what this is. So there's a research buddy that's very helpful, and I use it quite often, uh, that's powered by Nougat. So what is Nougat? Uh, Nougat is a um, fine-tuned LLM by Meta, which is fine-tuned for academic research. So it does very good with understanding academic research. And so somebody built a LLM that is fine-tuned with Nougat, where you can plug in a research paper and it will give you all sorts of information. 
you can interact with it. You can do whatever you want. It's totally free. Uh, the, it's on the, the last slide that I have with all this. But the point is, you can go and type any academic research paper. You can plug it in here. You can upload it. And then you can interact with it in any way you want. It can help you understand it. You can say ELI 5, explaining it like I'm 5. And it would do exactly that. This is very helpful in sourcing recruiting when you maybe you're doing something technical or non-technical. If it's technical, uh, the team might have a brand new technology they're trying to understand, or maybe they understand it, you don't. You could go to the academic research paper or just some sort of publication and tell them your background, what you understand, and keep that in mind as it's explaining it to you in that context. So very helpful. I mean, when you think about the real lift that these LLMs and tools provide, it comes down to rapid access to information. So if you think about in the past, in that scenario where you had to learn a new technology your team is hiring for, there's been many times that you just have to go to Google and start Googling terms. How much time do we spend actually Googling terms than we do actually reading the results? I think it's probably about even. This type of technology provides rapid access to information, so it eliminates a lot of that Googling, if you will. Also, you can tailor the results. Like maybe you like analogies and you can ask it to give you analogies, or maybe you like a step-by-step -step bullet point process. You can ask it to give you that. So again, it opens the door for rapid learning, which I think is the real, real big wave. And another thing, uh, Stack Overflow, that's a site that developers typically go to to solve problems. So if you have a problem, for example, it's used for many things, but one of the biggest ways it's used is if a developer is running into an issue, they can post the issue on Stack Overflow, and then people can comment on it. It's just a big forum for answering questions, essentially. The web traffic on Stack Overflow has gone down like over 50% since the release of ChatGPT to the larger public because you can get rapid access to information. So that's what this is doing uh, with Nougat. It's very cool. Another one, this one's one of my favorites. Uh, we're going to skip that. Is what's called Adrenaline. Um, not that type of Adrenaline. It's a different tool called Adrenaline. It is a pretty much an LLM fine-tuned on various natures of coding and, and writing scripts. And it's something you deploy on GitHub. And when you download it, it, you can deploy it directly on GitHub, and this pops up on any GitHub repository. And you just you can click it, and then you can interact live with an LLM indexing the repository. Let me explain that in a different way. How often have you ever looked at a repository and thought, this is cool, but I don't quite understand what this is saying? You can, add, you can say exactly that to and explain it to you in layman term. Or maybe your hiring manager says, this is the product that we're building. It's built off of this open source repository. We need to hire people that have done similar work. You can ask it that exact question. You could say to it, what are some similar repositories uh, to this one grip tape that I'm on? It will give you a whole bunch of those and give you reasons of why. So it can, you can interact live with the repository. It also comes in a Chrome extension. Um, I don't like it as well. It also has a web UI you can hop into. Again, I don't like that as well. I like this live interaction on the page. Um, so that's Adrenaline. I highly recommend it. it help, it's helped me learn a ton, whether it comes to actually like building my own things or trying to learn about other tools. You can interact live with a GitHub repository. That's huge if you're a tech recruiter. I would highly recommend Adrenaline. Links are on the last page. Um, the last one, because I do want to leave plenty of time for questions, and I'm doing good on time. The last one I want to share is what's called Lava. Um, ChatGPT, if you're a pro user, recently released the ability to insert an image and ask it questions about images. Again, that's cool, but you can do this open source with what's called Lava, for example. Um, and it looks like that. Uh, that's their unofficial logo. It's built by Microsoft Research with partnership with Madison, or you know, University of Madison, Wisconsin, Columbia. I'm going to skip this and just show you what it does. So Lava, again, it's a, a Gradio web UI. You can take any image you want. I have not done this, so this is going to be a uh, potential trial and error. Let's see, I think I have a, like, let's try this. What is, is this the workflow? Yeah, let's see if this can do it. I'm gonna see if it does. This is like a Langchain workflow. Um, let's see if we can just have it explain the, explain the concepts on, uh, within the image. Let's see if this works. If it doesn't, oh well. Um, this image diagram, let's do the concept of publication. Pretty good. Uh, pretty good, actually. Um, yeah, not bad. What I would, um, I got a better example. I think I prepped this one um, with a, maybe I didn't. I had a, uh, bummer. I had a, I was going to try this. I had a resume that was written in Chinese uh, and I was going, it was just an open resume on the web. 
you can upload that. I did try this the other day. You can upload the resume in Chinese and say translate to English and it will do exactly that for you. So these are really cool things when you think about, again, learning what you're trying to hire for. Like maybe the, the hiring team says, oh, here's like our, our plan, our, our, our workflow. Um, cool. Well, I don't understand this, but let me plug it into one of these things that could look at the image and explain it to me like I'm five years old. You can do that with these tools. And this is an open source resource to do that. Um, yeah, I think I've ran through these pretty quickly. And again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I am an open book in that anybody wants to talk about this stuff further, please reach out to me. Like this conversation does not stop here. Um, and I'll kick it back. Uh, yeah, happy to answer questions so we can do some Q and A. Mark, <clears throat> wow. A lot of info. Many nuggets of wisdom. I loved it. I loved it. Thank you so much. So, Mark, it's time for some 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 Q and A. Let me see if if who else for anyone still in the chat, please ask your questions now because I definitely have a question for you, Mark. Yeah. On yeah. the Lang Chain example that you showed, one of the things that I that I often have with like new tools or new ways is. How many of these things are truly practical in the day to day when you have like a busy work day with sourcing loads, right? Yeah. It's like, truth to be told, how many of these tools do you actually use in your day to day sourcing? Yes, fantastic question. Thank you for asking that. Um, it really, so lots of answers, and I'll, I'll put it as succinct as I can. First answer um, they are practical if it's specific. So, the example I gave about the Reddit example, I originally went down the path of trying to do this for LinkedIn because I wanted to get uh, an easier view of profiles I'm looking at yep. and have the ability to summarize rapidly the profile, but also pull out unique nuggets. Like there's people that list accomplishments in various places throughout their LinkedIn, list patents. Like sometimes we don't always get to that point, but we want a well-rounded view of the candidate. So I went down that path and I spent way too much time trying to get that to happen. LinkedIn is very tough to scrape all these other things that made it almost impossible to do. And I thought Reddit might be a good example because it's mostly open source stuff that I can access. So I shifted gears and went towards Reddit. The, the, to your question though, you can source on Reddit. And if anybody has questions on how to source candidates from Reddit, Karen Matthew, please. She's here. Follow Karen her. Matthew's here. Leader in that. She is fantastic and has put so much content out there. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm not gonna tell anybody how to source on Reddit. The point is it's an avenue you can look at, but we as sources and recruiters look at LinkedIn much more. So that's much more practical. So how practical is the Reddit example? Meh, I don't know exactly. Now that's my first answer. The second thing I wanted to mention, you can't, you, there's a fine line between having like the shiny, what do they call it? The shiny uh, new toy syndrome yeah. or fine, shiny new tool syndrome where you're constantly just tinkering with new tools and not really doing anything. Yeah. Uh, and, but there's the fine line between that and experimentation. And so I myself have always been very interested with how things work. It's just like my nature. I don't know why it's a blessing and a curse, but I always build in time to tinker. So I have my dedicated role and things. I got to source candidates. I got to have calls. I got to do all these things. That's yep. great. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it by tried and true methods, but I'm always going to have a little bit of time in my day to innovate. And I do exactly that. And if I get nothing out of the innovation, at least I spent time trying to innovate something and knew, know that it didn't work. Um, but you, you got to like find a balance between that shiny new toy or new tool syndrome and the actual tried and true tools. Final answer, and then I'll, I'll, I'll get off my horse about my high horse about this one because I totally get what you're saying because I get asked yeah. this every day, is if you're not adapting or you're not changing, you're not going anywhere. So the, the statement is, and I fully believe this, that AI, generative AI, blah, 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 is not going to replace sources and recruiters, but sources and recruiters using generative AI will replace you. So don't be one of those. And the only way you're gonna do that is through that ability and the curiosity to tinker. So find out what you wanna use it for. If it is using something for LinkedIn, or maybe you're having trouble finding new candidates, use these tools to explore how to get new candidates. Or if you're having trouble getting candidates through, you know, maybe you have a coding assessment, you have people that aren't passing the coding assessment, use it to understand why. So use it for the direct source that you're struggling with and find the best answer from it. Um, but overall, like just find time to tinker and be curious. I think yeah. you, know, you have yeah. your tried and true tools, stick with those, but you got to innovate a little bit. So very wordy, just, and I wanted to mention, thank you for asking that question because I get asked that all the time. Um, and you just, you got to find the balance. So because yeah. it's, it's, it's a question I constantly ask because we, I definitely suffered from the shiny new tool yeah. uh, syndrome. And then I got excited and told my team, we got to try this, we got to do this. And then they came back. It's like, well, yes, 
it is a cool tool, but it doesn't solve a problem of finding the right candidates, a yep. lot of false positives, and it just takes more time actually than just reviewing profiles manually. So hence, yes. well yeah. Put. Well put. yeah, yeah. In terms of your day-to-day -day work, what are what are tools that AI-related tools that you actually use? Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of um, using tools that can automate the repetitive tasks. Like I, I use several, but quick hitting answers. Uh, like magical is one and, and, and phrase express or text expander because as sources and recruiters, I would say 50% of our job, hopefully not now, but historically have been copying and pasting. I want to eliminate that. So I use tools where you can rapid keystroke different things. Like even if it's like 10 characters or let's see, eight, 10, 12, what is that? 15 characters. My email address is I type that hundred times a day. Think about the repetition, the time you're saving. So those minimal things I like to automate. I, I, well, as any type of summarization, like I get a lot of documents. I, I have to read a lot of papers, um, things of that nature. I like tools that can help me get to the meat of those uh, and ask and interact questions. So like the last ones I was showing about NuGet and there's a few other tools that do this. You can interact with your documents. I want to do that or adrenaline. The other one I mentioned, like I, I have a lot of questions and I don't have to read each um, issue that was posted on GitHub. I, I, I want to access and get to the direct piece of information I want to ask a question. So anything that is a repetitious part of my process, that comes to, those are the things that automate. So Phrase Express is my favorite out of the ones I mentioned. The uh, Adrenaline, like I mentioned, is another big one. Um, there's like bulk URL tools that are helpful. I mean, those are pretty pretty low level though. Um, yeah, I, that's off the top of my head. I'm sure there's plenty more I use. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and then ChatGPT or Bard or any any of the more well known kind of like tools in that sense, not not the some 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 of the really cool stuff that you've showed. Are you actively using those tools as well? Yes and no. Uh, in my personal life, all the time, uh, I, I use them for so many cool things. Like, uh, yeah, I could talk about some examples there in a minute. But uh, for work, um, minimally, and that's because. At a very large uh, or small bookstore company that I work at, yeah. uh, data privacy is huge, and I respect that. And because of that, there's only a few things we can input. So I, there's things that are proof. Like I can go to a public-facing LinkedIn profile and say, write me a Boolean string based on this candidate, because this is the person who works in the role currently. We want 10 more of them. Things like that. That equates back to, again, what I said earlier about thing, what I use for, for speed up automation. I could write a Boolean string. I could write it in five minutes, 10 minutes. How complex do I want it? Maybe 20 minutes. I don't know. But chat GPT or one of these others can do it in a fraction of a minute, not a fraction of a second. But again, um, I would have to go through it because it's not going to be bulletproof. But at least it got me. I'm a big sports fan. Sorry. It got me to the 50-yard line. So yeah. I can at least save time from that aspect. So those are the areas that I'm currently using in my in my day to day. Um, also, profile summarization. Like I said, if I have you know information on a candidate, I want it to summarize the profile. If I have a document, external, I'm not using Amazon confidential documents. External documents or papers, I haven't summarized that. Um, but yeah, I use it for those things that I can do, and I feel like that's the best use of of this technology. There's a big push within Amazon and other companies for recruiters and sourcers to be more agile or flexible, meaning um, maybe you'd work on some engineering roles. And then we have another push for some roles over here uh, that's non-technical. Like the issue there, like if we're sourcers, we know we have the muscle memory to source and we understand that. But the concepts that are around learning the profile, learning the technology, learning the group, like that's what takes time. And these tools is rapid access to information, as I've said multiple times. So it definitely speeds up the learning step, um, which is huge. And I think that's the best way that we can use these tools currently. Um, yeah, so I'm very selective with what I can do, but in my personal life, I use these things all the time. As you can see, uh, I, I tinker around and build tools. So. Yeah, 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 so, so amazing. On the, on the long chain, you kind of like trigger, trigger me. So, so unfortunately it doesn't work well with LinkedIn, right? But in the example that you have, that you've kind of like built in terms of that workflow, could you also automate that at a larger scale? So could you also say it's like, hey, here's a, here's a bunch of links. Mm -hmm. Can you then get all the personal stuff out there of, of all these people, <clears throat> write me these prompts mm -hmm. and then put them in an email follow-up tool, for example? Yeah. Absolutely. I haven't, uh, I've taken a little bit of what, what LinkChain is doing is it's taking an LLM and it's connecting it to sources. So you take a, a, a GPT as your LLM and one of the steps you would do is have it scrape the data and it scrapes the data and then it embeds those or vectorizes those, puts those into text that it can understand essentially. 
computers use ones and zeros. And then from there, that's where the chains come in. Like you can tell it to take all 50 uh, or take all the data that's been summarized and lift out the top five profiles that match the job description I just gave you. You could do that. Um, you could do that. Yes, absolutely. It's just, you'd have to have a step in there for where it takes the data, vectorizes it, and then you could ask it the questions from there. So it's doing, whether you're giving it one link or, 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 or others, it's just going to take the data and pretty much embed it or vectorize it. Um, so you can, you can definitely do that. And these, the things I showed, it's called Flowwise and the links on there, uh, yeah. as well as Langflow, it's a visual and, and allows you to connect those dots. Um, Langchain was built as a framework where you just hop into your terminal and you pretty much just write all the different parts of the, the, the code that you'd like and have it do it. But now people have put that into something that's visual, much easier to follow. Um, so you can do that. I, I would tinker with it a little bit. Um, it's fun. But again, where do you find that that shiny new tool? Like, fine. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah you could yeah. do that. Good question. Yeah. Um, STEM search group asks a question. Do you know of a resor resource that can take a prompt and give you a recommended LLM based on that prompt? You know, you know what I would do? Um, my first answer is I don't know, but when you, I hear that question, what I would do is I showed the LM sys, uh, one of the links is on there. It has the rankings of the, the different LLMs and it has different ways that it's ranked them. Like it ranks them the best one for coding, the best one for content generation, blah, blah. Whatever your, your use case is, are you trying to generate code? Are you trying to write blogs? Are you trying to spell check? Like I would look at which one performs the best because again, this is crowdsourced rankings. Like people are thumbs up, thumbs down on which ones is giving them the best answer as well as other parameters it runs them through. Um, but I would look at those rankings. There's other uh, places that that do these sorts of rankings. Like there's a, a, a Reddit, a subreddit uh, dedicated towards, it's called Local Llama uh, it's, it is, is the group, uh, but they do a lot of rankings as well. Um, but that's, that's why I would approach it. Um, but is there, I like the question though, is there a way that I could go to an, a source and say, I'm looking for the best rated or the best performing LLM for coding. Uh, and it gives you the top answers. I'm sure, I'm sure that's out there somewhere. Uh, is, is, is that another prompt? It definitely could be. But I, if I was to make that through, through, through LangChain, I would just have it route through that LM sys leaderboard. So why do that? You could just go look yourself. Um, but if you rather have a web UI to interact with, sure, you could do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I love it. It just right. got really dark because uh, we're about to have a thunderstorm. And so my screen is like. No, you're perfect. Oh, you're you're, you're, you're great. You're well tanned. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm jealous at, at, at uh, your light situation. Um, and Jane asked uh, what tool you use to find out about the Aaron Matthews. That was the lane chain one that I that I built just with those different chains. Um, again, the, the example uh, is shared on the slides as well as the, the tool to build them yourself. Um, but yeah, I just you, you take the LLM, which was OpenAI, you give it the prompt of I wanted to I want you to be a psychologist and analyze wording and tone and context, and then you give it the set of the, the, the prompts, which would be some uh, look at all these prompt, look at all these uh, comments, summarize it, look at all these posts, summarize it. Being that you're the expert, give me the top points that this person likes to hear about or that just tell me about their background. That, that's the chain. So yeah, that's how you're building it. It was just a, a self-made tool right there, but you'll have access to that. Awesome. Mark, I think that's it. Cool. It's such an absolute pleasure to have you, uh, Mark. And I, I truly understand why Jonathan, in a very healthy dynamic set, my uh, my 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 mentor Mark, but but this was this was phenomenal. It was very in depth, right? Like a lot of like new information, but your presentation was very well done in terms of keeping us engaged and like really understanding like how things uh, how things work, um, and. I truly feel that we uh, we're just scratching the surface. 100% agree. Thank you so much. Yeah, but great, well put. We are just scratching the surface. Absolutely, Mark. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That was our number five speaker. We have one more to go. But next week, we're going to take a short break um, to only return in full force the week after. So we are going to have our next webinar series on the 9th of November. Um, and then we're going to be talking about AI recruitment by the founder of MetaView, um, Seattle Magos. And he's been living and breathing AI for a very long time and has built an amazing tool 
um, as well with MetaView, but he will truly talk about AI, uh, that AI will save recruitment. Um, the recordings and presentations will be shared, so so don't worry, you 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 uh, you'll get all of the, all all of those as well. Connect with Mark if you haven't connected with us already. Please do so on our LinkedIn and on our YouTube channel, and don't forget don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter and get the twenty percent off of our virtual tickets for TRC. Thank you so much for coming. Don't download next week. Download to TRC the week after. We're going to be back with our last AI recruitment webinar series. Thank you so much.